Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. Today I thought I'd do a little unboxing on the Ledger Nano S cryptocurrency hardware wallet. Now this is a great device to have if you are holding large amounts of crypto. It's probably one of the most secure locations for your crypto next to a paper wallet. Okay, so that being said, I thought I'd do a little bit of the unboxing and then go into how to set this thing up using your computer. So let's get started. Okay, so here is the Ledger Nano S. I've left the plastic on the packaging here so we can open this together. And I'm just going to free up one section there. I like this box. It's actually quite nice. It's got a nice sturdy feel to it. Um, and the back here just has a little bit of advertisement here as far as how this thing works. It says that the Ledger Nano S is a hardware wallet based on a secure element for storing cryptocurrencies, embedding a screen to check and secure digital payments. And of course, um, this is nothing new. I'm sure if you've seen other videos on the Ledger Nano S that um, you do realize in order to operate this, there needs to be some interaction with the device itself. That's the only way that funds can be withdrawn from the device. And here we are. Makes a nice presentation, actually. Um, and pull this out. Inside the box, we have the ledger itself, which looks as though it has some kind of uh, plastic, maybe. Either that or... I don't know why this looks like it has some kind of fingerprinting on it or something like it's been handled. I don't know what that's all about. Has anybody else seen that? Um, there's something here. Now it could just be condensation or moisture or whatever, uh, but it did appear as though there were some smudges on here. And that can be somewhat concerning because you, there are reports of if you get these from an illegitimate source, as in if you don't buy it directly from Ledger, then um, you could have a compromised unit, which means whatever funds you store on here could be hacked or stolen from you. So that is a little concerning to me, but we'll see. Um, and again, this is just my first impressions here. So you're, you're looking at this at the same time as me for the first time. So, uh, but this is how the device looks. You've got a, a nice, probably, I would imagine um, aluminum sleeve here. And then the device itself, um, our micro USB input, as well as the two buttons here that you use to navigate through the different menu options. I'll put that aside, remove this felt here, and deep inside the box we have our instruction manual here, which is a nice little wallet fold. Okay, did you notice all right, now this is good. They, they include this for us. Did you notice there is no anti-tampering sticker on this box? A cryptographic mechanism checks the integrity of your Ledger device's internal software each time it's powered on. The secure element chip prevents any interception or physical replacement attempt. Ledger devices are engineered to be tamper-proof. Okay, well, that gives me a little bit more confidence. I'm not so worried about the what appeared to be fingerprints or whatnot. Uh, we've got a getting started guide, a recovery sheet. Um, these recovery sheets, I believe, are where we would write down our recovery phrases, okay? So we've got three different sheets here, probably for three different attempts, um, you know, for your ledger. So uh, what ends up happening is when you go to set up your ledger, it will spit out 24 different words and so you would copy down each of those words on your recovery card here store this recovery card in a fireproof safe or lockbox you may even choose to laminate this after you have written down the words so that uh, in the event of flood or whatnot you would still be protected you'd still be able to recover your ledger from this phrase okay um, so that you got three cards here, plenty to uh, 
get you going. And the other part here is getting started. Now this is really just kind of directing us to this website. So we'll visit this website to configure our device. All right, good stuff. Put that aside. Inside the bottom of the box, we have a little wrist strap. We have our micro USB uh, charging cable as well as, well, not charging so much as it is our data cable because there's no need to charge this. It's only gonna ever work when you connect it. Uh, we also have here um, kind of a little keychain accessory. So there's a key ring here and we would be able to then attach our ledger to this and then attach this to our ledger. Um, I don't know exactly how they propose. Perhaps it's one of these things where, you know, we put this through the opening here and then um, secure it that way. So um, <laughs> I don't know that I would do that personally because I think I would much rather keep this in a safe location rather than in my pocket. Um, but I suppose if we ever get to the point where, you know, we're traveling with our crypto, perhaps this is the way to go. Uh, in, in my own experience with crypto, I have found that it probably makes the most amount of sense to keep the bulk of your crypto on a device like this, which is cold storage. And then when it comes time for you to go out, you would then transfer, um, you know, a certain amount of what you may consider spending cash to your cell phone wallet, whether you use Coinomi or Jax or what have you, um, then you would use that uh, for your day to day sort of uh, transactions and whatnot. So that may very well be the future. But for right now, this is a safe location for your crypto. Let's take a look at the app on the computer. Okay, so I went to the website on this card. I got my ledger here and here's the site. It says, welcome, get started with ledger. Now, before I even go further than this, I just wanna point out this little warning up top where it says, never use a ledger device that has already been initialized. You must choose your pin code and write down your 24 words by yourself, okay? So we have our little recovery phrase cards here where we're gonna write down everything that we need, but um, if for some reason the device does not ask you for your pin code or provide you the 24 words, that should send up all kinds of red flags that maybe it was intercepted in shipping or whatnot and it may be compromised, okay? So you wanna make sure that you are approaching this in the most secure manner. So follow these warnings, okay? Next, um, we have a couple different options down here of which wallet we're going to be setting up. So since I've chosen the Nano S, I'll select this one here. We've got three more choices, configure device, go to special editions, or watch video tutorials. So if you're new to this and you would feel much more secure and watching videos or more comfortable having them walk you through it, that's one way to go. For me, I'm fine with this stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on configure my device. And then from here, uh, it's basically introducing us to Ledger Live. All right, and the way this works is, you know, you can download it. It's multi-platform, which is really nice. You can do Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, but for me right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and download the app and store this here. Ledger, there we go, Ledger Live Desktop. We're gonna save that. And once that has downloaded, I'm just going to select it. All right, so now it's asking me where I wanna store the actual file. I'm just gonna keep the defaults here, that's fine. Okay, now we are ready to run Ledger Live. I'm gonna click on Finish. Welcome to Ledger Live. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Get Started. All right, so now we have our choices. Get started with your Ledger device. Number one, initialize new Ledger device. We could restore a Ledger device. We could use a device that's already initialized or do not have a ledger device yet, so it would give you options to purchase one. So I'm gonna go ahead and initialize a new ledger device. Click this top one here, and I'm going to select which one I have, which is the Ledger Nano S, and then continue. Now it says, connect the Ledger Nano S to your computer, press both buttons simultaneously as instructed on the screen, press the right button to select configure as new device, and choose a pin code between four and eight digits long, followed by the check mark. 
Okay, after plugging it in, it says welcome. Press both buttons to begin, so I'll press these. With Ledger Nano S, side buttons are used to interact and control the user interface. Use left right buttons to change values and navigate through multiple choice lists. Press both buttons when you wish to confirm, continue, or open an application. To begin configuration, press both buttons. So I'm going to press both. All right, and it says configure as new device. Okay, this is good. We have either the X or the check mark. So I'm going to use the check mark here to proceed. And then choose a pin code. I'll use both buttons to accept that. All right, there we go. And now I have my first digit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in my pin code here. And once I have input the pin code, I'm just gonna use the four digits for right now. Uh, push both buttons to accept it. And now I need to confirm my pin code. Once I have entered my confirmation, press both buttons. Write down your recovery phrase. So what I do, once I push these two buttons, it will start showing me each word of my recovery phrase. And as you can see here, word number one is yellow. I press this again and again and again and go through all 24 words, writing them down on my recovery phrase card. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. After you have written down all 24 words, it will ask you to confirm your recovery phrase. So we'll do that by pressing both buttons. And it will ask you to confirm word number one. And what you would do is shift through all these available words until you arrive to the one that is on number one. Same thing for number two and so on and so forth until you have confirmed every word. All right, now that that's been set up, I can click on continue. Save your recovery phrase, that's good to go. Click on continue. And then did you choose your pin code by yourself? Yes. Did you save your recovery phrase by yourself? Yes. Now the reason these questions are being asked is so that you don't have somebody looking over your shoulder or copying down your recovery phrase without you looking. Were you alone when you did this? That's the, that's the question, all right? And the reason is for your security. Finally, is your Ledger device genuine? As in, did you buy it from them directly or did you buy it from a third party? You have to be very careful who you obtain these from because like I said during the unboxing, um, it, it, there was a little bit of a discoloration on the aluminum. I was wondering, is it possible that you know, maybe somebody had touched it. It was still shrink wrapped, but you know, that's very easy to fake. So um, I don't think that's the case because we had to go through this entire setup process, which means that everything looks completely legit. So we're in good shape right now. Is your Ledger device genuine? Well, let's check. All right, so I'll click on check now and it will go ahead and connect to it and make sure that everything is as it should be. You can see on the screen it says the device is genuine. So we're in good shape. Click on continue. And now this is a password lock, which they're saying this is optional, but the idea here is to set a password to prevent unauthorized access to Ledger live data stored on your computer. Okay, so your balances and everything will be tracked on your computer as well as on your nano device. Okay, so um, that's your account names, your balances, your transactions, and most importantly, your public addresses. Okay, so if you are trying to keep all of that information on the down low, it's always good to password protect your desktop application so that only you are the one who has access to your information. Okay, so I highly recommend password protecting your desktop app as well as the ledger. Okay, of course, we have to get the privacy issues out of the way here. Technical data in terms of bug reporting and whatnot, do you want to allow that to go through? It looks like we have no choice. This is mandatory, okay? As far as sharing analytics, I like that the default is off, okay? So it's not going to track what you do out of the gate, all right? But bug reporting is on by default because if they encounter a problem, 
and they do see that across all of the devices that are reporting the same bug, it does allow them to address it more quickly and more efficiently. So um, in terms of this, I, I don't really mind having it on because it will improve the product. Um, but you have to make that determination for yourself whether or not you want to allow them to even collect bug information. Okay, I'm okay with that. And looks as though the device is ready. So all I got to do now is open Ledger Live. Okay, now I like that they're actually, you know, taking you through this step by step, little by little. Before sending and receiving crypto assets, educate yourself to make informed decisions, okay? That's why I'm making this channel. I want you guys to have as much information as possible so that you can make educated decisions about how to move forward with your crypto endeavors, okay? So please be aware that Ledger does not provide financial tax or legal advice, all right? They are completely third party. They make a device, you use it, that's it, all right? You have to make all of the other decisions yourself, okay? And that includes probably most especially your financial decisions. What are you gonna do with the crypto that you store on the ledger, okay? They don't wanna say they have a part of any of that, okay? That's up to you. You're the one who is in control, right? Got it. Okay, so we're in, this is the main menu. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we have zero accounts. There are a couple different ways in which we can add accounts here we can just go ahead and click this button which will give us like the main coins that you'd want to add bitcoin ethereum litecoin dogecoin all that stuff or if you want some more specific coins you can click on open manager all right it'll connect to your device and then we'll give you all of these different apps which you can add which include all of the main coins anyway so bitcoin here's bitcoin cash bitcoin gold bitcoin private which is one that i'm interested in dash Digibyte, Ethereum, Expanse. We've got quite a few here. Here's our Litecoin, Nano, Pivx. Here's Zcoin and Zencash. You know, so there's there's quite a few good coins to choose from. I really like the fact that we have all of these available. And from here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and install a couple of these different ones. So let's go ahead and start with Bitcoin because that's the main one. And what this will do is load the wallet onto the ledger. Okay, so to install the Bitcoin app on your device, what you need to do is double click here and accept that application and then it will be installed. And once the app has been fully installed, you click on continue here. That will synchronize to the device. Now, as part of adding the account, it's asking us to name it. So um, right here, the default is Bitcoin one, and I'm assuming that's because you can add multiples. So if you wanna add Bitcoin two or Bitcoin three, you could do that, each one getting its own unique Bitcoin address. I like going with the default. I'm gonna stay with Bitcoin one. Click add account. All right, account successfully added to your portfolio. I'm gonna close this. And now if I go over here to where it says accounts, you can see Bitcoin one. Now, if I edit this account, I can rename it. Okay, so that's not like a permanent thing. You can call it whatever you want. So if this is your Bitcoin savings account, <laughs> you can put Bitcoin savings, whatever's good for you, all right? And then you can check your logs right here. You can also delete the account from this point. If I'd like to receive Bitcoin into my ledger, then all I have to do is click this receive button. Here, it's going to connect to the device, open up the Bitcoin app, we're good to go, click on continue, and now verify address on the device. The Bitcoin receive address will be displayed on your device. Carefully verify that it matches the address on your computer. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is whether or not the address that I see on my screen matches the address that I see on the Nano S. And everything looks good. I can confirm the address. And now I can send my funds into this address. So I'm just going to copy address. And now you can see here underneath my accounts, it's already showing BTC 0 0.001. This is the US dollar value right now. And that took all of maybe about two minutes. So 
it moved very quickly and I'm sure it's just a matter of confirmations before I could actually spend this but for right now everything is looking great and when we're finished with our Bitcoin app what we can do is scroll through here to where it says quit app and double click this that will disconnect our Bitcoin wallet from this point on it's pretty much rinse and repeat for each account that you want to add to your ledger okay so here's a question if I need to log into the app to set it up and to send my Bitcoin, do I need to be logged into the app in order to receive Bitcoin there? That's a good question. Well, tell you what, why don't we send another transaction and see if we actually need to be logged in on the device to receive the crypto. So here we go, sending the same amount, 0 0.001 to that same address. And now we wait. Let's see if this will actually show our balance increase. Yes, it did almost instantaneously. It's 0 0.002 already. So very good stuff. You don't have to have your ledger connected to receive crypto into it. Once you know what your ledger address is, then you can start using it and not have to worry about leaving it connected or anything like that. Because of course that would defeat the purpose, right? Remember, all of your crypto is stored on the blockchain and it's associated with your unique wallet address. So that being said, what you have through your ledger is not so much actual storage of the crypto itself, but rather the keys and the passphrases that lock down your unique wallet address such that only you have access to that nobody else okay outside of those people who may want to send you crypto via your address should you want to share it maybe you don't want to share that address or maybe you want to create a second address that you share publicly whereas the other one you use more or less for your own private means okay so keep that in mind it's just a matter of security and that is pretty much it for this review of the Ledger Nano S. I hope you found the video helpful and that you liked it. If so, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to hit subscribe, ding the bell, make sure you get all those updates from me. I know videos are few and far between right now because I'm very busy with work, but I do appreciate you guys staying with me and looking forward to making more videos headed your way in the coming weeks. So thank you so much, guys. God bless.